What causes borderline personality disorder? Here to answer that question is leading clinical psychologist, Dr. Romani. Everybody wants to know with such a complicated clinical condition like borderline personality disorder, how did this happen? That's always the million dollar yeah. question with any mental illness, frankly. And if you look at the work of Dr. Marsha Linehan, who's done a lot of the research in this area, a lot of her work and other people's work highlights this idea that it's two things coming together. A biological vulnerability and coming from an invalidating early environment. So the biological vulnerability part, that part we're not entirely clear what that's about. Is it genetic? Is it a neurotransmitter issue? But something biologically about that person has resulted in them being more hyperreactive. They sort of overreact with emotion, with sadness, with anger. That couples with coming from an early environment, usually a family environment, that's very invalidating, mm. where people are downright hostile, abusive, negating, critical in a chronic way. Listen, no parent gets it right every time. This is the majority of the time that environment is invalidating. And you can see how that becomes a setup for assuming that all environments are gonna be invalidating. So there's a sort of hyper overreaction in the face of that. Now, where this work gets interesting is not everybody who comes from an invalidating environment develops borderline personality that was disorder. That my next question. And not everyone who has that biological vulnerability develops borderline personality disorder. Obviously, if you have both, the probability goes way up. Now, an example of sort of the most extreme invalidating early environment is sexual abuse, childhood mm. sexual abuse, right? That is an e example where the child's trust is betrayed, they're confused, no one's keeping the child safe. However, the majority of people who experience childhood sexual abuse do not go on to develop borderline personality disorder, and a lot of people with borderline personality disorder did not experience right. sexual abuse as a child. So there's no absolutes here. And I think that frustrates people because oh, everyone wants a slam dunk. I was just about to say that. Yeah. No. I am frustrated mm -hmm. just listening yeah, to that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So when we, whenever we sort of uncoil or unspool the history of somebody with borderline personality disorder, we definitely see that something wasn't quite right in that early environment in most cases. But I gotta tell you, the longer I'm in this field, the more I hear tales of people who have borderline personalities adults, I've worked with the parents, and they'll say, listen, we have racked our brains. And this is multiple people. So it's not like one person could be deceiving and hiding this. And there's just no story there. There's no neglect, there's no abuse, there's no bullying, like there's no smoking gun. So it really then comes down to, in those cases, it probably was all biological vulnerability. The research right now is focusing on uncovering what that biological vulnerability is. Remember, as with all mental illnesses, the earlier we can intervene, the better the work we can do. So if we could identify some of these early soft signs, we might be able to work with people to give them better coping skills, particularly around managing emotion. Yes, and that is a common thread with all of the mental health yes. issues we've been talking yes. about. Mm -hmm. Early intervention and yes. intense intervention yes. is the key yes. to almost anything. Especially, and we often miss these things in childhood. Yes. That's where it gets tricky. For a lot of people, these patterns were apparent even in late childhood, early adolescence, but nobody really jumped on it until they were well or into adulthood. Or they say, well, yeah, he's 16, yeah, 16 so of course he'll, he'll grow out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, if we don't know the biological mm -hmm. component that yeah. is, could be causing mm -hmm. this, the only way we're coming to that conclusion is by, by saying that everything else can't be the cause, so it must be a biological If cause. there's no other historical kind of an issue that comes up. I mean, listen, we are born with a temperament. Yep. Every, ask any parent out there, especially a parent who has multiple children, they'll say, one kid was a really easy baby, and they went on to become an easy grown-up, and they had that kid who was clenched up from the day they were born, and they were clenched up as adults. We do have temperaments, yeah. and there may be more vulnerable temperaments, which are believed to be biological in origin too. Until we can really unravel this, we're not going to know until, again, these behavioral patterns emerge. But what this also speaks to, though, is what we can do is hedge our bets. This means things like teaching people to parent, that you know sometimes under a lot of stress, 
parenting is hard. This is not meant at all to blame parents, of but course. it's really about ensuring that we have supports in place for parents, whether that's daycare, whether that's parent training, whether mm -hmm. that's pediatricians and other medical professionals that work with parents so they can be the best parent possible. We put a lot of pressure on parents as individuals when really as communities we can be drawing together and supporting parents, especially parents who are in more vulnerable situations, high stress, um, job insecurity, other mental health issues, we should be supporting parents because that well, allows them to support kids. We put a lot of pressure on them yeah. and then no tools. And no tools. So that's yeah. one of the reasons that I love what we're doing here because parents or anybody yeah. can go to medcircle.com, get yeah. on a free digest, it doesn't cost them any mm -hmm. money, and start to get the lessons, the knowledge, yes. the resource, the actionable steps yes. to take to say, all right, maybe my kid's going through a phase or maybe there's something yeah. more going on here, but either way, yeah. I'm gonna do everything that I mm -hmm. can to move forward. Exactly, and the importance of creating very validating early environments for children at home, mm -hmm. at school, that, that children need to hear day in and day out, you're okay, yeah. you're not just okay, you're terrific. Pay attention to them. However, you can do all of that, you can do all of that, and a person can still develop borderline True. personality True. disorder. So that's where this gets tricky. And you know what, I also like to hear that, and I'm not three years old either. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. to hear Amen. I'm terrific too. That's right, so, that's I mean, right. That just, yeah. we, we, mm -hmm. it's, there, it can be understated mm -hmm. of being a good person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be a good person yeah. and that will mm -hmm. always help. Uh, Dr. Romney, thank you for being here, talking about this fascinating uh, topic. Uh, we'll have more videos from you, I'm sure of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Your next step is to head on over to medcircle.com and sign up for the Med Circle Digest. What is it? Well, Med Circle will send you the latest articles and the latest videos on the mental health topics that matter most to you. So go to medcircle.com, sign up for that digest, and let's keep this journey on better mental health moving forward.